National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Fargo, official retail bank of the Florida Gators. Hey Gator Nation, welcome to another episode of Gator Zone alongside Megan Parler, Jeff Cardozo here with you. The rights union behind us and for me, back in the day, it was a hub of everything. You go eat, you go study, you go hang out and heck, you even bowl a little bit. It was, uh, it was awesome and uh, 20 years later, it is still the, uh, the heartbeat of this campus and it also housed early voting and of course, student athletes, the entire country making their voices heard and nothing different here at the University of Florida. Yeah, Jeff, Mary Weiss said for the first time ever in her 34 years of coaching, her Gator volleyball team was all registered to vote, Coach White's team all registered to vote and football got in on the action. They want to make sure their voices were heard and they are all registered as well. They say about half of college students vote, but that is not the way Gators vote. In the last election, 85% of our student body was registered and more than 60% of us vote, voted and we voted here at the Rights Union and we're trying to keep up that streak. So. We want you guys to help us make that happen. We hear that you guys have pledged 100% voter registration because we want you all to be leaders. And in many cases, most of you, I think, this is the first time you've had the chance to vote for president of the United States, right? Has anybody voted for a president before? Okay, so you're the leaders. The students look to you and what you do, they're going to do. You want to vote in Gainesville, in Florida, right? So that's why we're going to send out the paper, give you a paper form. So I'm going to ask everybody to pick up their paper forms now. Are we through with the turbo vote, do we think? Everybody registered on paper today. Your form's going to go right down to the voter registration office. You're going to be all set. There's not going to be any question at the end of today. The number one question most people ask, what does it take to be eligible to vote in Florida? You need to be 18 by November 3rd. Even if you're not 18, you can still pre-register so that when you do turn 18, you'll be notified when you can vote. You have to be a resident of Alachua County and because you're a student here at UF, that means you're a resident. So, are you planning to vote come November 3rd? Hopefully. Hopefully. That's right, this we're counting. This is hard. This is hard for me. I don't know who to vote. I don't know who to vote for. That's right. The next question I get asked, who do I vote for? I don't, I don't know, know how to I don't know how to vote. So as Renell told you, we're gonna do a little bit of voter education here for you guys, not this time, but maybe you'll have us back. And we'll give you some info and some like some of the four one one on what's on the ballot so you know what to expect. Your vote, your voice. So uh, great to see all the student athletes get out and uh, do that early voting. And on November 3rd, the actual voting day, the NCAA has said no sports for anybody. So a very unique day. Obviously, everybody's going to get out, do their thing, and uh, we should see some, uh, some great stuff when it's all said and done. Yeah, Jeff. So just a friendly reminder, go out, have your voices heard, and vote. we got to get to our first break here on Gator Zone. When we come back, we have so much more. 2020 has been the year of the unthinkable and millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table. So Wells Fargo is helping our neighbors feed their loved ones, using some of our locations as drive-up food banks, and helping provide 50 million meals for Americans in need. The unthinkable has happened. Now it's time to rethink how to make a difference. Wells Fargo. Every day is game day. At the University of Florida, instead of running the same plays, we draw up new ones. We drive exploration and unleash innovation to imagine solutions for future generations. 
below the surface, among the stars, and in the classroom, we bring together the brightest minds to create game-changing impact. We're a team of over half a million playing for the world's seven billion, and we play to win. Game on. I'm here on the sidelines with Spiro, head coach of Good Greek Movie. So Spiro, what is the game plan today? To win, I'm guaranteeing the best move ever. Ooh, look at this guy. He's doing the gator chomp before picking up that box. That's because Good Greek is the official mover of the Florida Gators. What a spin move. He's going all the way. All the way across the country. No job is too big or too small. So call the pros at Good Greek Moving and Storage, the official mover of the Florida Gators. To get a free quote, go to goodgreek.com. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, official retail bank of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Gator Zone. Like Jeff was saying, we're hanging out in the right, just like you did back in the day, Jeff. And um, Gator fans, they definitely know a specific name. They know this name, Lauren Evan. She goes by low, her Gator soccer family loves her, and she's had quite the journey from freshman to senior year, Jeff. Well, I think you, you never know what life's going to throw at you. You're, you're healthy, everything's fine, you're playing on a, a great, one of the best teams in the country, and then, boom, all of a sudden you get sick and you're coming back from the NCAA tournament. So it's certainly been a struggle, but she hasn't let it get the best of her, and she certainly has used that to uh, inspire not only the team, but many people across the country. Okay, so I guess I'll start with my journey. My freshman year, we went through a normal season, and then we made it to the NCAA tournament. And then Elite Eight came around and I began to feel a little bit sick. We flew home and I went to the doctor like the day after we got home because my symptoms started getting worse. Just things started ramping up quickly. So I headed to the infirmary where they tested my blood and found the leukemia. From that day on, I was in the hospital for about five months. I don't think like people realize how hard it is to be in a situation where like not that you're not being chosen to play or you're not being chosen to put in in practice drills but like just that you physically can't and you just were doing that so I think that was super difficult for her but it just showed like the resilience because she's here now. Some tough curveballs were thrown my way when I was sick I try not to show that to people other than my close family because I feel like when everybody else around you thinks you're doing well, they kind of speak it into existence and make it become real. She had positive attitudes when, it, when things were looking really, really scary, you know, so she, I, I don't know where she got that from. That's something that's, that's all her. I know your parents are supposed to be there for you through everything. That's kind of what people say your parents are there for you for, but I feel like I owe them because they never gave up on me, they kept pushing me. The times where I was really down, they lifted me up. And so, for me to have them there with me is like what keeps me going, honestly. Lauren's treatment went really, as much as it went right, it went wrong. You know, she, she was recovering from the chemo, but the chemo was affecting her ability to, to walk, right? She was paralyzed from the waist down for many months. Being numb for three months, not being able to feel anything from my belly button down, and then one morning waking up and being able to wiggle my toes, and having doctors and nurses running in telling me that if that can happen, then everything can come back. I think that was when I started to realize that there is a possibility, and just to keep working and don't give up, because that was the start of something new for me. I remember pushing her around in the wheelchair when she couldn't walk, move her legs at all to like when she could slowly walk and every extra step that she would take. Like I just remember her like sending me videos and it would just be like so emotional every time because she was just taking steps to see where she is now. Like it's just like crazy to think about just in two years that such a difference has been made. 
I would have dreams when I was sick of me just practicing. So now that it's a thing, it's like a dream come true almost. I saw this in my dream two years ago when I was numb. And now I'm like playing in scrimmages and I'm just passing a ball. Like a lot of people on my team don't realize how much it can mean. When she came back for summer, she said, you know, I'm, I'm doing everything that everybody else is doing. And I was like, well, let's, let's see how that goes. And, and so far, so good. Obviously now, practice is a lot harder for me than it was as I was a freshman because my body's just not the same anymore. I'm not as fast, I'm not as strong, but I try not to compare myself to everyone, everyone else around me. And I just come into practice every day saying that I'm competing with myself. The fact that Lo is able to inspire people in our practice sessions with you know, attempting the fitness test, training and practice, uh, running extra with people. I mean, I think it's really hard for anybody on our team to make any excuses when you see that. I don't know if she realizes it as much, but she really serves as an inspirational figure on our team. And I think like it inspires me every time like I see her doing the stuff that we're doing. And then also like it just makes me happy because I know that's what she's wanted for so long. So it's just nice to see. She was so thrilled when she got the word that she was going to be able to play and uh, we didn't even know. We drove up from Tampa same day, we had no idea and uh, he mentioned that he's not emotional and he got pretty emotional in the stands watching us play. I look down and I can move my legs or I can breathe without a tube or I don't need to be connected to some sort of wire where I'm getting chemo every day. So if something's not going my way in life, I just think about things that are going my way and how far I've come. They tell me I can't walk again and now I'm walking again. They tell me that my hips are never going to get better and they're getting better. They tell me that I'm never going to play again and I'm playing. I just look at it as I'm just going to keep defying the odds. So if they want to tell me something else that I can't do, I'm just going to have to prove them wrong again. Well, thanks again to Lo for sharing her story with us as always. She is such an inspiration in Gator soccer on the uh, back end of their fall abbreviated season. Only a couple games left before the SEC tournament. Yeah, so make sure you tune into that and uh, plenty more Gator Zone to tune in as well. We are halfway home, but back at it right after this. UF Health is home to the number one hospital in Florida, according to U.S. News and World Report placing us among the very best in the nation. With UF Health Shands Hospital ranking in nine adult specialties and UF Health Shands Children's Hospital ranking in three pediatric specialties, we're the top healthcare provider in the state, making us the best choice to care for you and your family. Learn more at ufhealth.org. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo, official retail bank of the Florida Gators, and by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, the proven sports fuel. Hey everybody, welcome back to Gator Zone. Megan and Jeff now in the Florida Bookstore, part of the Rights Union. Get this sweet volleyball shirt, all the sports for, look, $19.95. What a deal. Well, where Haley Warner, a volleyball player, is from, it was Arkansas, so there wouldn't be all this orange and blue. It'd be red and a ugly red. Ugh. 
No Razorback stuff. Got to have the Gator gear. And fortunately, Haley made the right decision to get the Gainesville. Yeah, Jeff, growing up in Fayetteville, Haley said she grew up a diehard Hogs fan. But uh, luckily for us and the Gators in that junior class, those six talented athletes, she's on the right side for us doing big things. And here's her story. When her fellow junior classmate talks about her, you can't help but notice that everyone enjoys being around Haley Warner. I would say that Haley is just extremely caring and loves quality time and just spending one-on-one -on -one time and I think that's really awesome. I've learned that more like this year than I have in the past. I think just she is just so easy to carry on a conversation with. So it's a good thing that Warner, the Fayetteville, Arkansas native, decided to head down to Gainesville to play volleyball and step out of her comfort zone where she was the home state's Gatorade Player of the Year. I mean, I grew up like literally five minutes from the campus, so it's kind of hard to not be a hog after going to high school. Um, but most of the time, once you go to Fayetteville High, you go straight to Arkansas. So it's kind of like, I'm such a homebody that I really wanted to like, kind of challenge myself and I don't know, see if I could do the long distance and I felt like Florida was the perfect fit for me and even though it is super far away from my family, it's a lot further than I thought it would be, but I don't know, it's just the perfect fit and I couldn't have asked for more, so. And the family girl has loved the support she has received every step of the way. I think they were really, really proud of me. Like I said, I'm really a homebody, so it was a lot at first, but you know, they're my number one supporters, like I said before, and whatever I want to do, they're going to help me do, and they're going to make sure that I'm successful no matter what. So at first it was a challenge, and they do miss me, but they know that I'm thriving, so that's all they can ask for. Haley is not only thriving, but showcasing that power every chance she gets on the right side. I would say Haley is an incredibly physical hitter. I don't know if anybody hits the ball harder than her, so she definitely has a huge fear factor to, for the defenders, and then she's also able to counter that with having smart shots and being able to do different things with her swing. So she's just a really fun player to set because she has such a wide um, array of skills that she can use. And that swing does more than she knows. She's just so powerful and strong with her swing that it just brings energy to everyone else. Like She doesn't have to be doing anything special with her demeanor or her energy, just her going out there and swinging with no fear like she does is just really inspirational, I think, to a lot of people on the court. Even though this off season looked much different, Haley set her mind to being the best version of herself and others took notice. I think that she put in so much work and it was so evident when she came back and she just been absolutely killing it in the weight room and on the court. So I think that for her, just proving to herself that she can set a goal, she can accomplish that and just be in control of what she's doing has helped her to even take off technically on the court too. I think that everything she did in this off season, like she dedicated herself to being who she wants to be. And I think she came on the court like a new player with way more confidence and I think she found like her self-confidence throughout this quarantine whether it was like from workouts or just spending time with herself I think she radiates a different self. And Warner is making sure to live up to the standard that she sets during the process. Just know what you want to get out of each practice each rep and you have to keep yourself accountable because no one else will especially since they're I know it is a team sport, but at the end of the day, you are your own person. And if you want to make the court, if you want to win the SEC, even if it is a condensed schedule, then you got to do what you got to do. But I definitely think keeping yourself accountable as your own person is probably the best. Making the necessary changes to be successful has been a constant in Haley Warner's journey. Well, Gator Volleyball finally kicked things off. They got two road wins to start the season over at Auburn, and now they're finally back at home, but we're going to switch gears to someone else who plays their oh, home games at the same place. You started this. Oh, Sorry. look, I was finding basketball gear. Okay. Look, sweatshirt. Oh, that's nice. Little Jumpman jump man. logo. Oh, it's this long pants. It's starting to get winter, you. but we'll see. But look at this. I mean, I can show off my guns in the Gun tank show. top. How about that? That's my favorite. 100%. Don't you think? <laughs> All right, well, okay, finish the story. Okay, so we got to mic up Coach White. So here was him at 7 a.m. getting the guys ready. Oh, what's up? You good? You smile yet today? When's Niles' first bad day coming? When's this freshman day coming? Soon? That's what I'm saying. 
and he's hopping into a shot. That's why he's missing it. What's up, Slim? What's up? Oh wow, we got we got us one now. <laughs> <laughs> Can we keep finding some old side seafoods? I just walked up to him and I said, how's your ankle feel? He said, oh, good, good, good. This is going to be my best day, coach. He's a machine. Ben, big fella, keep working on bending. That's it, O. 80, 80. Good, good, good. Good job, Trey. Good, Omar. That's it, O. First one of the floor wins. We're trying to win a championship. It is blue, blue. Good, good tie, Chase, Chase, choose key. Hell yeah, we keep playing. Run, run, sprint, sprint, oh. Hell yeah. Yeah, Niles. Way to compete, Niles. Come on, Niles, come on, Niles. Niles, great motor. Good motor, Niles. I hear you, Ab. Dad, get your hands up. Appreciate you, Noah. Good offense. Way to compete. And a big shout out to Jacob and Alex for heading out and getting that 7 a.m. workout done and getting Coach Mike wired for us. And they uh, get back to things the week of Thanksgiving. That they do. And I know a lot of Gator fans really excited because Mike White talked about running up and down the court. It's going to be fast. It's going to be crazy. Just like uh, we're going to get crazy because top plays are next. I might whip out this football if there's no uh, camera. Go deep for a pass when we get back. has been the year of the unthinkable and millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table so Wells Fargo is helping our neighbors feed their loved ones using some of our locations as drive up food banks and helping provide 50 million meals for Americans in need the unthinkable has happened now it's time to rethink how to make a difference Wells Fargo UF Health is home to the number one hospital in Florida, according to U.S. News and World Report, placing us among the very best in the nation. With UF Health Shands Hospital ranking in nine adult specialties and UF Health Shands Children's Hospital ranking in three pediatric specialties, we're the top healthcare provider in the state, making us the best choice to care for you and your family. Learn more at ufhealth.org. Unfortunately, we threw a couple passes warming up and, and we got caught, so no playing inside the store, but this guy played really well back in the day, Emmett Smith, that's part of the uh, Hall of Fame swag they have now. Yeah, he made a few top plays, so did Jack Youngblood back in the day, but this week we got a lot of volleyball and soccer athletes doing big things for you. Today's top plays are brought to you by Nike. Two hands, free ball, Florida. Marley sets the middle, the pipe, and it's a kill! Back middle kill for Thayer Hall. Alabama goes out to Marjama. It's blocked oh, by Okamore. Nadi Okamore with the block. Pass, Sarame, back middle. Montserrat sets the pipe. Thayer Hall buries one from the back row for kill number five. She plays it up though herself. Goes across floor side. Marley sets the middle. And the kill in the middle for Nadi Okamore. The freshman buries it to end the first set. 13-12, Alabama goes slide play. Caesar athletically tracked her on the net. The slide play is rejected. Aaliyah Wells, the season. To the right side to McElroy. 
and Thayer Hall blocks it right back at McElroy, hit her right on the shoulder. Played up by Bama. Bama tries to send it across, but Fisbeck is rejected. Hail Caesar on the block. Out to the outside to Caesar. Caesar blasts another one. Played up by Hall. Set to the outside to Hall. Oh my Hall goodness. straight down with delivery. The kill for Thayer Hall. Make it 17. Pass made McKissick. Marley back set right side. Holly Carlton down the line. Buries it. Holly Carlton. Kaylee Thomas, Alabama to the outside to Doris Carter. Doris Carter is blocked. Julie is up to stuff it alongside. To Trask, Trask on the left hash, drops back, throws the ball, throws a beautiful throw. It's caught, a catch at the 38 yard line. Beautiful Copeland running with the ball, dragging four Missouri tacklers with it. Copeland down to the 24 yard line. That's a beautiful 36 yard gain. Here's Trask looking to set it up the pass to Tony to the 20 yard line. He makes a man miss, he's at the 15. He spins away from traffic at the 10, at the five, he goes in! Mick, you describe what he just did, because I can't. Third down in the yard to go, and they're going to hand the ball off to Beatty, and rather that Beatty, rather Basilek lost it on an exchange. The Gators fall on the ball at the 30-yard line, and the Gators have a takeaway as Missouri fumbled it over to the Gators on the 30-yard line. Tony motions to the near side. Trask drops back, looks and looks, fires the ball down to Tony. He's wide open. It's a touchdown. Oh, my. Tony scoring a touchdown. Pitts the tight end with his hand in the dirt on the right and the snap to Trask. He'll run for a first down at the 40, at the 45, breaks the tackle, Trask at the 50, at the 45, still running inside the Missouri 40-yard line on a beautiful 26-yard run. Missouri 15-yard line. And now here's a handoff to Tony trying to sweep it off to the left side to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, down toward the pylon, and he's in! Oh, my! What an elusive, slippery run by Tony! Gator team, but they're playing very fine. Here's third and one. Missouri with the ball. Connor Bazelik tries to hand it off, and the Gators will stuff Larry Roundtree and make a great play. And once again, it was Kyrie Campbell. Thrown 17-yard line. The snap to Connor Bazelak. Looking, looking. Now steps off to the left, tries to run, and down he goes! Oh, my! Jeremiah Moon on a full moon gets the big play for the Gator defense. There's the snap to Trask on play action. Swings the pass off to the right. It's caught! for Justin Shorter, and the Gators now lead 33 to seven. There's the snap to Trask, here comes Mizzou. In the pocket, Trask throws the ball to Grimes, makes the catch at the 12, at the 10, at the five, he spins in, and he's gonna be in for a touchdown! Oh my, what a nice, powerful spinning run by Trey Grimes! So there you have it, top plays, and they are always awesome, as was all the gear that we got to have. It looks like you got some great stuff. Yeah, always protecting yourself. So you got some camo, sunglasses, and 2020, a new face mask. I know what those hats are. I'm old now, so you got to protect the, uh, the stuff from the sun. But I did find the, uh, the old school logo for uh, throwback Missouri game, so that was like fun. And a little koozie with a bottle opener. I mean, who makes this stuff? You, would, you would pick that. It is, uh, <laughs> it is tremendous. Just like uh, we hope the show was for you. A lot of great stuff going on as always, isn't there? Yep, and you can always follow our Gators on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. So make sure you do it, and uh, make sure you tune in every week to Gator Zone. Form a partner. Megan Parler. And the uh, great camera work of Nicole. I'm Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you next time. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade.